So this is my brand new lawnmower engine. We're gonna run in this year's 12 hour. And there is a lot more to this than just pulling it out of the box and putting it on the mower. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. We're gonna take this thing out, get it fully prepped, check it over because sometimes there are some issues with these engines, remove the governor so it can rev to whatever we like, and then get this thing a run in and on the endurance mower. That's what this video is gonna be about. Here we go then. So this thing's out of the box, brand new, fresh, ready to go. Now, these come out ready for a normal lawnmower. They are standard lawnmower engines. These are actually a Lonson, a Chinese copy of the Honda engines that are everywhere. They're on every uh, ride on lawnmower, pressure washer, whatever. <laughs> so this is a Chinese copy of them. We can run them. Now, there are a couple of things to know. These things are about 440 pounds compared to a Honda, which is about 600 for an equivalent engine with an electric start and all that sort of thing. Now, these are great, they run great, but you have to check them carefully. Sometimes the build quality can be not great. Um, for example, I found this in my last engine, which isn't good. So we've got to check all that over today, make sure everything's good. This standard exhaust is no good to us. We run a modified exhaust, so a modified version of this. So that's all gonna come off. We'll take that off first. So all we need to do is get these two screws off the bottom of the exhaust, and then there's one M6 on the side. There is one thing you have to do that I'm not gonna to do today, but that is the carb. So these carbs are not very good. Uh, over the bumps, they splutter, which specifically for racing, I'm sure for normal use, they're fine. But yeah, for racing, these aren't good. So we swap these out with just Chinese copy ones um, of the Honda carbs, and they're good. So I will swap that out eventually, not now, because we're gonna use this to run it in. You may as well stay on there. Um, the next thing is gonna be all of this stuff. So there's like, I think this is a oil sensor that cuts the fuel and there's a governor on here which limits it to two and a half thousand revs so obviously that's going to come off but there is a portion of this governor that's obviously inside the crankcase so i'll pull all the outside stuff off and then we'll get to the crankcase stuff in a second so time to get all of this ripped off it's a few m6 screws and this is all the standard stuff you don't normally see that goes into these engines. Yes, you can buy them new, fresh out the box, but there's actually quite a lot of stuff you've got to do to them before you can get them on the lawnmower. So there we go, oil sensor off. We don't need any of that stuff. Then I'm gonna undo this throttle linkage and then get to checking the head. Next thing to check is just for general build quality. So I found some pieces of aluminium in my engine last time that have been there since I first bought it. So I'm gonna check them all now. So this is definitely one of those things that I've learned over time. Once you find an issue once, you then check it every time. So uh, four M6 bolts so to take this valve cover off. Cover. Got to make sure we don't lose too much oil. It's the tiniest bit of oil, but nothing untoward. And everything looks good in there. So we're going to get that back on. And that looks good. Now the next thing is this oil breather. So this breather goes into this air box. And obviously normal use, this is fine. Whenever the engine breathes a bit of oil, it goes through the carb, it's fine. But in performance cases, often you get a lot more oil out of here through all the shock and the wobbling. And you don't want that going in and compromising your power. So we run these just to the floor, uh, these oil breathers. And so that requires us to fill up the hole in this uh, air intake so that we don't get loads of dust in past the filter. So I'll do that now. So two M6 bolts to take this air filter off. This is quite a common thing you'll do over a weekend. Uh, you get very used to taking this thing off. So two on the front, one longer screw at the back. This then takes it off and reveals the carb. And in there is our oil breather. There you go. That's the hole I'm talking about. We need to fill that up. What I'm gonna do is use some of this gasket sealer and a bolt. So not the most legit way of doing it, but I like to fill this up with a gasket sealer and then get a bolt which threads its way in. And I find that has never caused me any issues in the past. So time to flip this thing over because we're gonna check the internals. So a load of 12 mil bolts that we're gonna take out the bottom here and then we can crack this casing open. But there's one thing to remember, we've got to take the oil dipstick off as well. So that's what I'm taking off there. So time to shimmy this case open. And that is the bottom case there. Had a couple of things fall out, but inside you can see 
uh, the crankshaft, the camshaft, and then there's a couple of balancing shafts. And in the bottom here, that is the governor. That's what we've got to remove. So first thing to do is going to be to pull the governor out, which last time was hard work. So the governor, for those that don't know, is this thing. This limits your engine's RPM. So at a very specific speed, these weights come out and that lifts this central part, which pushes on a lever which then pushes return on the accelerator. So on the uh, throttle body in there, that is constantly being controlled by this thing, which is controlled by its own mass um, spinning up to a certain RPM. So that holds your engine at just two and a half thousand RPM where they know it will run all day long forever and it will just churn away. And if it's on a pressure washer or a piece of farm equipment or whatever, it will just do that all day. We want to remove that because we want to be able to freely rev the engine. So. That's the first thing to do, is for this to come out, and it was hard work last time. Often here, you've got to be more brutal than you think you should be on this. So none of this stuff is going to be any use to us for racing. So it's okay if you break it. You just don't want to damage the engine inside. So once that top cap comes off, there is like this weird circlet ridge thing that holds all of this in. Um, and then you've got the nylon piece of the governor. And so I just kind of get a screwdriver in and pull that whole Finally thing out. off. Look at how much I had to ruin it to get it out. Now, if you know of a better way to do that, let me know in the comments. I'm sure there is a hack to pry it out in a certain way, but I ended up just having to destroy the center of it to get it out. But now the final thing to do inside the engine is to get in there and check the conrod bolts on the big end. Now, this is only just a precaution, just to check they're talked up to the right setting. I believe it's 25 newton meters, but I don't have a torque wrench that will go down that low. So Paul, my father-in-law is gonna pop over with his. We're just gonna check it together. That will involve pulling out all of these cams, so we'll have to retime it afterwards. But then we know everything inside here is good. I've had a really good look. There's no swarf, there's no any, nothing untoward inside here, which is good news. Right, it's another day, but I'm back out here working on this. Next thing is gonna be the air filter. Now, now obviously it's very dusty when we race, so I'm gonna put some filter oil on this to make sure it traps that fine dust doesn't end up in the engine again a while back i had uh, some super fine dust get past the air filter and get into the oil in the engine and that killed an engine for me so this is another one of those things i just do as a precaution to be doubly sure and for a 12-hour race if you have an engine blowout that's the end of your race so you've got to be super super careful so paul's here now and we've got a pulley on the crankshaft just so we can rotate it nice and easily we've also removed the spark plug so there's no compression as well then we'll start removing these balancing shafts now all of these have timing marks so you don't need to worry too much about how they go well it's easier to put them back in correctly so we don't need to worry about uh, where they were they only fit in one way uh, and so here we're now going to rotate this round so we've got loads of space in, inside the crankcase set a torque wrench to exactly the setting we wanted and just check these carefully in the past i've heard of people having conrods uh, bolts that are slightly too loose and that's going to be an engine failure waiting to happen uh, so you can't be too careful with these with these engines and just for the time it takes to check them over i always find it's worth doing so there we go both of these were absolutely fine we're then going to start to reassemble it so on the top here we're looking at these tiny little uh, timing marks and dropping them in in the right place and so we're going to get these lined up and drop that in make sure the teeth are meshed sometimes it takes some jiggling to get them in and there we are that one's dropped in nicely once we've got the other one in we then rotate the engine over a full rotation to make sure everything's okay and nothing's knocking. So time to put it back together and we've got the O-ring here. This is easy to lose uh, and we're going to pop that just back on there. And then uh, the paper gaskets, I haven't got a spare, but when they're new, they come off quite nicely and you don't really need to replace them. But to be doubly sure, I put some instant instant gasket on there just to be 100% sure it's sealed. Then we've got the little oil pump. To do this comes with this sort of strange square piece that slots in there uh, and then a rod that goes down into the bottom of the engine and then there's a cover on the top there to seal it up this is quite self-explanatory to put back together then there's three m6 bolts and we're just going to do those up along with that we'll then put in the 12 mil bolts and i'm just using a rattle gun to get them slightly done up 
uh, or just nipped up and then we'll use a torque wrench to do these up properly again it's not something you definitely need to do but you may as well when you're here now one thing I like to do is to replace these threads with helicoils. From standard they are imperial bolts and the likelihood of you having one of those when you inevitably lose it in a field is very low. So one thing I like to do is drill it out and helicoil them out to M8 so we know we will have spares if we lose these bolts. It's just one of those things I like to do. So two helicoils go in there uh, and that should be nice and strong. I'll do that on both sides uh, and that will hold our exhaust manifold on nicely. So after putting the helicoils in, they're all in there good. I'm just going to put the exhaust on in a second. I've put a new carb on. This is, well I say new, I've cleaned up an old reliable one carb that we know works. Um, we put two springs on there and then I've put the fuel pipe on and I forget who first told me but uh, if you run a loop in your fuel pipe you get less spluttering issues so we're going to do that. I normally run a bigger fuel filter but these engines on this mower uh, will run a, a smaller one that's fine. Uh, and then this just this bracket goes on for the throttle cable that will connect up there in a second. Then I think we're pretty much ready to get it on the mower. So next thing to go on is the fuel tank holder. So we run these four and a half litre tanks. Uh, that's the largest we can run in an endurance race. So this goes on just with the starter motor bolt and a couple of others. And then on the bottom, they actually come without tapped uh, holes. So you can run whatever you want. So we've got to tap those out. We run M10 on the bottom of these engines. And then we've already got the engine plate from this mower and we're going to pop this in here so three m10 bolts one m8 bolt on the bottom of here i'm just getting these done up nice and tight this needs to hold the engine on really super tight to this engine plate that then gives us our movement to tension the belt uh, so got that on and then our modified exhaust all we've done to change this one is just change the uh alter the tube on the top so that we can fit the muffler under the engine rather than on the side that's the only thing we're allowed to do to modify these so now two m8 screws in here after we've helicoiled them and then we're going to get some running in oil in the engine I like to measure this out, so we run uh, 1,100 milliliters, so 1.1 liters in the engine. We then run it in on the mower for five to 10 hours. We ran it in for about five or six hours, I think, on the on the mower turning the rear wheels to get everything really running nice now as careful <laughs> as we were with that this is where everything went wrong now i don't actually have footage from this but when richard and i were doing a final build of this mower before the 12 hour race uh, i was sorting all the mechanical stuff on the engine i then gave it to richard to wire it up and he said oh should we start it should we make sure it starts and between us we both forgot that we drained the oil out of the engine so we actually ran this engine with no oil for about four or five seconds before we realized and then killed the engine. Now, I didn't know what would happen here. We were being so, so careful with everything. So actually between uh, the footage you saw and the race weekend, we pulled the engine apart, checked all of the surfaces inside the conrod, inside uh, the cylinder, everything. Every, luckily everything was sparkly clean super super nice didn't look like we'd done any damage and so in this practice session which you're seeing here for the 12 hour we were a little bit worried about the engine we didn't know what it was going to do i ain't come out of the core it just stopped so we're on so you can hear we're debating it and now actually what happened was that the uh the the ground was a little bit soft and it was causing problems for everyone not just for us and actually this engine went on to take pole position in our class get the fastest lap in the first few laps and then we went on to win the race and it pulled super strong throughout so that is what to do to get an engine running just don't run it with no oil see you in the next one